Father, let this be a blessing. We, we, we encourage all our pastors and ministers around the world that will be viewing this video, the pastors in India and in Pakistan and Africa and Uganda and Nigeria, uh, South Africa. We, we invite you and bless you. We pray that this short message this morning in this season of Thanksgiving will be a blessing unto you as we uh, 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 reflect and remember the blessings of the Lord. Even though this year, as we prophesied earlier this year, that it would be like a roller coaster. It would be up and down or to be twists and turns and everything. And it's been true to the prophetic word this year. Everybody's looking forward to 2020 being over, but I don't think they're going to realize what's going to happen in 2021. So you might as well just get used to battling. The next battle, that we're in a battle, we're in a war for the souls of nations, not just this nation, but nations, and it's going to continue to go on for these next three or four years. It's just going to be a tremendous push against darkness and light, against those that want to bring us into bondage, take away our freedoms, take away your freedom of choice, the freedom to think, the freedom to express yourself. It's, it's just getting horrible what they're trying to do and trying to shut us up. So we will not shut up, but we're going to give God thanks this morning. I'm going to read out Leviticus chapter 7. Just a couple of verses, three or four verses in Leviticus chapter 7. I want you to hear this. It said, this is the law of sacrifice of peace offerings, which he shall offer unto the Lord. If he offer it for a thanksgiving, then he shall offer with the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Unleavened cakes mingled with oil. A pancake without mingled with oil. Just a pan, just unmingled cake, pancakes. Have a pancake. And unleavened wafers, anointed with oil. And cakes mingled with oil, fine flour, and fried. Amen. I mean, I mean uh, cold water cornbread. I mean, used to make, <laughs> making, uh, uh, making uh, uh, tacos, whatever. Just fried, you know, just a taco shell. Amen. Fried, fine flour, just mingle it and mix it with oil. That's all he's saying. And so I just wanted to say, the Old Testament is a shadow of the new. He said, you'll mix it with the oil. The mixing with the oil is talking about, he, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. We eat the bread of life. We are anointed by God, by the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, they had to bring a sacrifice to God of cakes and whatever, mingle with oil, and bring it, to the, bring it to the altar. That was a sacrifice. It was called a thanksgiving offering. It was a thanksgiving offering. There was a peace offering and a thanksgiving offering. He, Jesus is the peace, the Prince of Peace. He said, uh, the Holy Spirit is mixed with us to give us peace. He said, my peace, verse uh, Isaiah 9 says, for unto us a child is born, unto a son is given, the government shall be upon his shoulder. We are the shoulder. The body of Christ is the shoulder of Christ. He's the head of the church. We're the body of Christ. We're, it's on our shoulders. His name shall be Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Peace not as the world gives. He's a prince of peace. In this hour, in this time, in this week, we need peace. People are depressed. People are suicidal. People are, are fearful. They need the, they don't have, if you're not saved, you don't have peace. You're afraid I'm going to die of corona. Well, if, I, if I die, what's going to happen to my children? If what happens to me and, and, and you're up all night fretting, but you don't have peace in your heart. Verse 7 says, of the increase of his government and peace. I was thinking about this this morning, that we're trying to bring a theocracy into a democracy. I don't know if it's going to work. Uh, I think Jesus is going to have to come and rule in theocracy for a thousand years. Just got to be one God. We're America, the earth right now is in the place of, of between two opinions. If God is God, serve him. If God is not, you serve him. And we're at a place of a tipping, a tipping point where they have to choose. And if you go back to the book of Judges, where, where, where God told Samuel, he said, Samuel, they have not rejected you, prophet. They rejected me because they wanted a king like all the other nations. And what's happening is everybody, all the nations want to be one world government, one world order, but America and Trump is standing in the way. Everyone wants to be under this system, and we're standing and saying, no, that's not God's system. That's a demonic social communist system. We don't want that. So, so God has given us a choice in America to either choose him or choose that system. And so if Biden gets in, we've chosen that system. And that means that judgment comes because he said, God said, you don't want me, I don't want you. I'll just let you leave you to yourself. Y'all just go ahead and destroy each other. 
And so we have to be careful that know that the Prince of Peace is in it. He said, he said, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. There's no end to God's peace upon the throne of David, upon his kingdom, to order it. We're supposed to bring stuff in order, to establish it with judgment. We can't get judgment in the courts now. With justice, you can't get justice anywhere from henceforth forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. In other words, it's not in our strength. It's not in your strength. It's in the anointing on you that will perform what God wants to bring. To bring order, judgment, and justice, you need an anointing to do that. You need an anointing to go in and, and, and witness to your family members and an anointing to talk to them so the, and, and when they're resisting you and you, you've got to stand with that anointing and they know something is different about you. It's the anointing. And they may say, I don't want that. I don't want that. But they really want it. Because, but first they've got to watch you because you're a book read of men. You're an epistle. Amen? An epistle, you, uh, not a chapter, not a paragraph, you're an epistle. You know, not, not just one paragraph. A lot of people are just an epistle. One scripture, that's all they know, and then the rest of their life they act in a fool. <laughs> I run across a lot of people that know a lot, one, two, or three scriptures, and they think they're saved. But they ain't serving God. Uh, you talk to somebody in the street, you talk to one of the alcoholics or drug addict in the street, I know the man upstairs. Well, why ain't you serving him if you know him? Evidently, you really don't know him because if you knew him, you'd love him. And when you love somebody, you want to be around somebody that you love. You won't be around nobody you hate. You want to be around somebody you love. So the oil of anointing of the Spirit is part of the Thanksgiving offering. So we're going we're gonna to anoint you with oil. That, that oil is important. You no longer have to sacrifice for peace any longer. All you got to do is accept the Prince of Peace. He said, My, the, the peace I give you, the world can't give you. He's the Prince of Peace. Leviticus 7.13, besides the cakes, he shall offer his offering unleavened bread with the sacrifice of thanksgiving of his peace offerings. In other words, the word peace offerings means, thanksgiving means toda. Toda is the Hebrew word, lift your hands and praise him. You ever, you, you ever have somebody, I don't know, uh, men, if, if your wife is mad at you, and she, and she met it, and she cooked your dinner, and she just slammed the plate on the table. Here. That is not a peace offering. And I, and I tell men all the time, if your wife is mad at you and she fixed you dinner, don't eat it. Because it's full of salt and pepper, and she over seasoned it. Oh, you, you, she going to let you know that she mad. <laughs> I got a T-shirt on that one. Hallelujah. Adoration, <laughs> extension. Oh, she got mad at me. Before we got saved, she got mad at me one time. Man, that stuff was so bad. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Salty. You can tell when somebody cook with love. You can, you can, your foot start tapping, your forehead sweating. You say, hey, hey, put their foot in this one. This is really good. But you can tell when they're mad, too. It's just horrible. So he said, bring that Thanksgiving offering told I with extension of the hand. Like a choir singing, Lord, I come with my offering. I'm praising you and I thank you that I can make confession. He says, the word told I means confession. He said, when you give this Thanksgiving offering, make a confession. Understand the confession thing. I'm going to get there in a minute. And of it, he shall offer one out of the whole oblation for a heave offering unto the Lord. It shall be the priest's that sprinkle the blood of the peace offerings and the flesh and the sacrifice of his peace offerings for thanksgiving shall be eaten the same day that it is offered. He shall not leave up any of it until the morning. He was teaching them, don't leave anything in the morning. He said when, you get them, uh, when he took them out of Egypt, he said the man is going to come, eat just, get just enough for one day. Don't get enough because it's going to spoil on you. And they got more than enough and people had rotten manna everywhere. In this season, you've got to learn how to rest in his peace. Only way you can rest in his peace is receive him as Lord and Savior. He said, I'll shed my love abroad into your heart. I will come into you, and I'll give you peace that the world can't give you. There's a, there's a peace that you can't see. There's a peace that the world doesn't know about. It's called the Prince of Peace. He said, I peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives it. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither be afraid. See, the world will give you peace for a couple of days, and then here come another problem. 
for a week, you get a week of peace. Uh, or you just got to, uh, there were times in your life, you know, you don't even want to go home. You were so strife, too much stress, and strife and going on. And you, said, mm. <laughs> you want to ride around the block four or five times before you go in the house, amen? Or wait till everybody go to sleep so you can go in and then you can go to sleep, amen? I know it. I've been there. Just, you can't even get no peace. Toss and turn. Sleep with one eye open. You don't know what's going on. <laughs> he said, bring your thanksgiving offering and make a confession. Now, that confession doesn't mean whether it's good or bad. You, sometimes you got to make a, a you got to confess your sins. Joshua 7, verse 19. They were getting ready to go in and, and, and uh, attack Ai. God had led them. They, they, they had beat Jericho. The walls fell down. They were feeling all confident. <clears throat> and God had told them, he said, now when you go to Jericho, don't take anything in Jericho because it's the first fruit. It belongs to me. He said, everything in there, the cows, the sheep, the goats, the gold, the silver belongs to the Lord. Don't take nothing out of that city. That's the first thing. He said, every other city after this city you can take whatever you want. But Jericho, don't touch it. That's the first fruit. And Achan, with his big head, decided he was going to take some gold and, and some clothing because he saw it. And, 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 and God broke out of them. They went to Ai and got beat up. And they all come back crying. And, and, jo and God said, Joshua, why are you crying? Somebody sinned. There was sin in the camp. Somebody disobeyed your order. And Joshua said, to Achan, he said, my son, give. I pray thee, give glory to the Lord, God of Israel, and make a confession unto him. That's the same word of thanksgiving or toda. Worship him. And tell me now what you did. Don't hide it from me. And Achan answered and Joshua said, indeed, I have sinned against the Lord, God of Israel. Thus and thus I have done. So, Confession needs to be made, be it good or bad. You didn't sin against your husband. You didn't sin against your father, your sister. You sinned against God. You make your confession to him. You don't go to the, uh, the Catholic priest and make your confession to a Catholic priest. You go to God and confess to God. Your Catholic priest ain't got a heaven to put you in and ain't got a hell to get you out of. Amen? So you go to God directly. God split the curtain that we can go boldly through the throne of grace directly to Jesus Christ and confess our sin. Amen? Thank, give thanks and remembrance is the, is the thanksgiving offering. First Chronicles 16, 8. Give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Tell everybody what God did for your in your life. Sing unto him. Sing psalms and talk you of his wondrous work. God brought me out. Amen. They said I couldn't have the car. And then all of a sudden they gave me the keys and said, drive, take it home. Give glory to his name. Let his heart rejoice and seek the Lord. Continue to seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Seek the Lord and his strength, not your strength. Praise him. If you want to get God's attention, start praising. You want to get a prayer answer, start praising him. Amen. Some kind, it's something about praise that God doesn't let anybody inhabit, uh, take, his, take his glory. And when you begin to praise, you don't even have to be saved. When you start praising God, he'll show up. He'll show up. Remember his marvelous works that he have done his wonders his judgments of his mouth remember when you couldn't take care of yourself and someone took care of you remember when you couldn't help yourself someone else helped you remember that God sent someone to take care of you oh you seed of Israel his servant you children of Jacob his chosen one he is the Lord our God his judgments are in the earth give thanksgiving thanks for the blessings of Abraham have you thank thank God for the blessings of Abraham you ought to thank for the blessings of Abraham. Uh, 1 Chronicles 16, 16. Even the covenant. If you don't have anything to thank the Lord about, thank him about the covenant that he made with Abraham and swear unto Isaac because we're part of that covenant. I got a, I got a right to the covenant, man. When I'm in that covenant, I was, th I was thinking about this yesterday. If you got a family member, uh, you say, I shall be glad when my rich uncle or my rich aunt leave me something. No. Grab hold of that anointing and that covenant that they got and get, get your family blessing because they're in the family. You can get the same blessings that belong to, that they got. Not unless they work in witchcraft and taking your blessings, amen, but you, you got to know you know how to do that. But. <laughs> 
family members will do that for, to you. You know, they'll go to the witch doctor and say, uh, let me be the blessed in the family and let them be suffering all the time. Uh, say something else, burning candles and carrying on. Yeah, amen. Verse 17, and confirm the same to Jacob for law and to Israel for everlasting covenant. The covenant says, I will, Jesus said, I will never break the covenant. I have a covenant with you. A covenant is a contract. You give me your sin, I'm going to give you eternal life. I will not break that covenant. I will not turn away. I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's part of my covenant. My covenant is blood. I'll give you peace. I'll give you angels charge over you to protect you in every way you go. That's part of the covenant. I'll give you divine prosperity. You bring your tithe and your offering, your thanksgiving offering unto me. I'll rebuke the devil for your sake. The canker worm, the caterpillar, the palm worm will not eat your crop. Because I'm going to bless you because you're in the covenant of peace with me. Saying unto them, I will give you the land of Canaan, a lot of your inheritance, when you were but a few, but e even a few, and strangers in it. Saying unto them, I will give you the land of Canaan and your lot of your inheritance. I don't know why. I feel the Lord just uh, uh, want me to share this again. But I had in a dream, I was in a dream, and I, and I walked into this house. I was in a house with a, a family that had five, six, seven children in the house. The house was nasty. You know, it had clothes everywhere and the stove was nasty. And, and, and I was sitting there and I say, why don't you get up and clean this place up? And they were just all depressed. It was just like, uh, this is just, you know, they're just used to it, you know. God ain't, I ain't got nobody to help me and nothing help me. I said, I can't stay in this place. It was a place of poverty. It was a place of, you know, you're just dark place. And people, some people are like that. I've had people early in the years in ministry, they would come and ask for, ask for money from the church. I said, I'll come by, let me come by your house first. I had one lady that wanted money from church, and I went by her house. She had a boyfriend up in there. They had beer bottles all over everywhere, cigarette ashes everywhere, stove was nasty and stuff. I said, no, 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 no. I'm not giving money to this situation here, no. Y'all ain't even serving the God, but you want the church to give you money? to go buy some liquor for him? No, that ain't going to work. That's not going to work. But see, you got to you got to be wise. So the Bible says don't cast your pearls before swine. But in this but in, I left that house. I said I can't stay in this place of poverty. I can't stay in this place of lack. And I and I and I walked out the door and, and, and when I walked out the door I was in this little village and there was a bunch of guys over by a, a barrel and they had a fire going. And they were all rag, they had all dirty and they were all hobo like looking people. And, and it was dark. There was no, you know, it was dark in that village. There's no very little campfire lights and everything. And I, and I say, why are y'all sitting there? And they were talking about how dark it was because outside the village was no light. And they said, if you go out there, you'll be destroyed. And I asked the guy, I said, well, what can I find? i buy a lighter. I need a lighter. He said, well, there's a little corner store over there, little corner hut there. And I said, you got, you got a flashlight or a lighter? But they were trying to convince me to stay. And when I got the lighter and I was getting ready to leave that village, do you know they had jumped me? And I started fighting back. I punched them back and kicked them back. And they looked at him and said, this man, he's a fighter. I said, you're not going to keep me in darkness. I'm going, I'm going to take the light. With this darkness, I'm going to take a light into the light. In other words, they were trying to get me to stay in that poverty mentality that I was going, always going to be in that situation. I said, no, I ain't staying in here. No, I got to go. Y'all afraid of going in some place where you've never been because the enemy would fear in your heart, but you are a light, and you just give me a light, I'll, I'll light a torch and dispel the darkness. So we got to understand that you can't stay. You got to confess, come out of that mess. Give thanks for the blessings. He's, he's, Jesus is there every step of the way. Every step of your life. And we've heard some testimonies. But God's been with me. Every, every, I've been through the wilderness. I've been through the place. I remember you for, for fasted 40 days to come out of that wilderness. Yeah, she had to come out of the wilderness. I'm coming out of this wilderness. I got to get out of this place. I can't stay in this place. First Chronicles 16, 20. And when they went from nation to nation and from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do him wrong. Do them wrong. Yeah, he reproved kings for their sake. So go on to Arizona. Ain't nobody going to mess with you. The strong man in Arizona ain't going to bother you. And he ain't going to suffer you saying, touch not my anointed. 
and do my prophets no harm. Sing unto the Lord the earth and show forth from day to day his salvation. Hey Amen. I'm going with my head up. I'm going. See, you're going to Arizona like you own it. You walk in it like you own it. Where's my prosperity? I know y'all got it reserved somewhere around. Where's my house? Where's my car? Where's, my, where's everything I want? It's here. It's already, God already ordered my steps, so it means that my blessing is here because I'm, he already told me to go there. That's where my blessing is going to be. I'm looking. Who's got my blessing? Let it go. That, that Thanksgiving is like David dancing before the Lord. He danced, took all his kingly garments and began to dance before the Lord. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. Bless his name. Lord, I bless you for food. I bless you that you woke me this morning. I bless you that the electric bill is paid. I bless you that I got gas in my car. I bless you that I got shoes on my feet. I bless you that I got laundry detergent. I bless you. Come on, you got to bless him. Just say, Lord, I thank you. I may not have everything I want, but at least I got something. I'm breathing. At least I got enough strength. I can get up and go get it if I got to get it. Amen? At least I can get it. If I may not have no money, I can go find some, some cans or something. And take it to the scrap, scrap yard and get some kind of money. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting. His truth endureth for generations. He is good. He is good. Praise God. Please God with the fruit of your lips. Give your fruit. Hebrews 13, uh, 15 says, By him, therefore, let us offer a sacrifice of praise of God continually. That is the fruit of our lips. You got to open up these lips and give thanks into his name. If we busy giving thanks, we ain't got time to criticize and, and cuss and carol. Amen. I don't understand how we can have bitter water and sweet water coming out of the same fountain one night. You're so sweet. Oh, I just love you. And then 15 minutes, why did you leave that on the stove? You didn't put them dishes away. Why did you do this? Come on now. You just told me you loved me a minute ago. Now you won't beat me to death. Jesus. You didn't close the cabinet. You didn't pick up your plants on the floor. You didn't do this. You didn't left the soap on it. You squeezed the toothpaste the wrong way. Come on now, get a life. Just... Relax, have peace, amen. Thanksgiving, give God thanks, amen, that you have some toothpaste, amen, whether I squeeze it from the bottom or the top. <laughs> but do good and communicate, forget not, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. So when we sacrifice and thank you, Lord, I thank you. I thank you that you brought me to a place where I can get teaching. Guess what? He's going to add more stuff on top of the teaching. He's going to give you some more stuff because they say, hey, they appreciate what I did for them. Let me open up another door. Let me just bless them with something. They ain't even asked for it. I just want to bless them because they thanking me. Amen. Just give them something. And he's going to go down there and bless them. See how they thanking me. Amen. They ain't thanking the other fellow. They thanking me. Hallelujah. Give them something. Amen. Bless them. There's a danger in not being thankful. The danger is in Romans 121. He said, because when they knew God, they glorified him not and were neither thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and foolish in their hearts. So when you're not thankful, you, 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 you can wind up being the going in perversion. Deuteronomy 28, 47. God told him, she's, she's free now. Go ahead on, girl, you're free. Deuteronomy 28, 47, because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness. She's got joy. That's the kind of joy. Just a childish joy. That's what God said. Just act like a, a child. Just give me some joy. Amen. Just have a good time. Hallelujah. With gladness of heart and with abundance of all things. If you fall out like that, God ain't saying, shh. He said, come on, give me some more. Let that girl go. Praise the Lord. Therefore thou shalt serve thy enemies, which the Lord hath sent against thee in hunger, in thirst, in nakedness, and want of all things. He shall put a yoke of iron on thy neck until he be destroyed. That's a good, that's how it is. Children, they just want to enjoy it. They just want to have a good time. And we're trying to say, oh, shh, shh, we're having church, we're having church. Don't you know we're in church? You can't do that. Jesus said, suffer the children, forbid them not. Let them come unto me. Amen. I wish I could be childish like that. They ain't got a care in the world. Amen. I just, ah, I just do anything. <laughs> now we got to suffer the rest of our life, try to get some food and clothing and shelter, and she ain't got a care in the world. That's how God wants us. Not a care in the world. 
Somebody going to feed me. Somebody going to take care of me. They don't even think about that. God said, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to feed you. I'm going to cover you. Yo, God said, I'll defend you with favor. Look, write this scripture down. Psalms 5, verse 11 and 12. You need to grab this. I've got a picture here. This picture, they're in a bubble. That's what favor is. It's like a bubble, a covering, anointing around you. You're like in a bubble. When God anoints you, there's a bubble around you. No arrow that fly by day will come near you. No, you don't even need the shield of faith. When favor is on Psalm 5, verse 11 says, But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them shout for joy because thou defended them. Let them also love, also that love thy name be joyful in thee, for the Lord will bless the righteous and with favor wilt thou compass him as with a shield. When you praise God, there's a shield of favor around you. Shield of favor. When you go through the drive-thru, they give you two scoops instead of one scoop. They give you super size when you only ask for a small. Amen? I asked for a small one time. They gave me a big old quarter. That's all the cups we got. Well, I'll take it then. Amen? <laughs> Amen? All the time, all the testimonies. I thank God all the testimonies. When I, when I would go to uh, Famous Dave's and order my, order my meal and they, and they get my chicken wrong. And then I have a whole chicken because they can't take it back in the kitchen. I said, I wanted a leg and thigh. I didn't want no breast. So they just left the breast there and brought me my leg and thigh. So I, I ate the whole thing. I said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I act like I didn't want that breast. I took it home and then ate it. Amen? She ate it. She ate it. I know you did. I don't even think God out of the wrestling with that breast. She grabbed it. Thanksgiving will free you, may free you from bondages and tests and trials. Jonah chapter 2 verse 9. Look at what happened. You know, you know he was given an assignment. He didn't want to go. He didn't want to do it. He's the only preacher that preached that nobody uh, 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 got saved. Well, they got saved, but his prophetic word, nobody paid attention to it. It didn't come to pass. He prophesied, everybody going to die up in here. Dog, sheep, cattle, goats, your goldfish, all y'all going to die. And then he got mad because they didn't. Jonah 2 verse 9. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. Wait a minute. I'm stuck down in the middle of a fish for three days. The only way I'm going to get out of this fish, I'm going to have to give some thanksgiving. I'm going to have to think my way out of it. I didn't pray. I didn't snot it. I didn't boo-hoo. I didn't thought. I didn't scheme. I didn't say, I'll do it. And I won't do it no more, Jesus. Whatever he said, he said, but I'm gonna, I will pay that which I have vowed, salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake, when he said, I'm going to start giving thanksgiving, the Lord spake unto the fish and it vomited Jonah out on dry land. It took him three days to realize he needed to repent. That's a long time to be in, in the belly of a fish. I don't know how God, God had to put a bubble around him because I know fish got that digestive juices in there, the acid in there, eat you up. But he was in that fish for three days. Then he realized, wait a minute. He's God of salvation. I praise you. I thank you, Lord. I give you praise. That was the key to open up the door to the fish. Thanksgiving. So sometimes when you're in a trial and you don't know your way out, just start praising God. Just start praising him. Just thank him. I just thank you, Lord. I thank you anyway. I don't know I messed up. and I know I did the wrong thing. Amen. I thought I was marrying Willie, but I married Chucky, and I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I... <laughs> <laughs> thought I was marrying Susie and I married the bride of Chucky I don't know I messed up but I thank you anyway you brought me through they didn't kill me I should have been dead they could have killed me amen but I got to give him thanks and we give him thanks so this is a week of thanksgiving I want you to rest in the Lord this week don't fret about what they're saying on TV and uh, I ain't got no stimulus you breathing ain't you God will give you a stimulus check. Amen? He said, I'll give you the seed to sow. I'll, give, I'll take care of you. He said, I feed the, the ravens. I feed the sparrows. How much more would I feed you? I'm going to take care of you. Somebody's going to bring a turkey by your door or something, or a plate or something. You can get a turkey or something to eat. Amen? But that's my message for this morning. Give thanks unto the Lord. It's, uh, give that Thanksgiving offering.
unto the Lord. Hallelujah. And then we're going to get some, we're going to, uh, I'm going to anoint you with oil. Let me put some praise on or something. Find some 